I think we're live. So, hey, we're here talking about multiple streams of speaking income. I really want to sit down with the people that uh, somehow my program or uh, helping and my guidance has helped them to create multiple streams. Now, hey, we're sitting here with Kathy Armias. Hey, Kathy. Hey, how's it going? Uh, great, great. Uh, I'm excited about helping people with their different streams of income. And you're a perfect case study because you were already a marketer and you already had a book when this uh, came into your life. So uh, what was your book? What was your subject? Yeah, so I had um, my book, The Unbreakable Rules of Marketing, Nine and a Half Ways to Get People to Love You. Uh, book was doing great. I was speaking on it a ton. Um, but in my mind, it was just a book. And, you know, books are great for credibility and they're great for people to read. But you don't make a ton of money off of books. And, uh, you know, at the time, I was also coaching TED speakers. I got very involved in the TED world. One of my marketing clients gave a TED talk. And so I, I ended up getting into that world. And they kind of, my worlds kind of combined. And you really pushed me there and you were like, you need a product for Ted, you know, for coaching Ted speakers. And a lot of speakers would love to give Ted talks. Like you really should make a product. And I'm like, eh, yeah, you know, I don't eh, know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. And you're like, no, you should do it. You should do it. You should do it. Like, I think I started to make the product just so you would stop asking me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. So I've annoyed you into. Yes, you annoyed more, me into making a product. Streams. I'll, I'll change the product name, annoying you into multiple streams. Exactly. But you know what? It, uh, I'm so glad that I did it. And it did um, take a while. Like, it, took me, it took me nine months to record it, which was probably eight months too long. <laughs> you know, I probably should have done it a lot sooner. So but you I procrastinated. Did. Let's be honest. Let's, let's right. not let people think that it's a nine-month process. No, let's, yeah, let's not. Yeah, let's tell them the truth. It, I procrastinated quite a bit. Um, there were pieces too that I was really unsure about. I really wanted to be touchy about, you know, the whole Ted world and, and how to put that all together and, you know, talking to my IP lawyer and making sure everything was good. So I, I definitely had some roadblocks that I hit as well, you know, because of the content I was creating, but about 98% of it was just me taking longer than I needed to. So, yeah. And I know that one of the challenges that all speakers have or emerging speakers or even people like you who are established, but they think of another, uh, another area of expertise that they might have. And they're, they're, they have to start with what's the problem that I help solve. And what was that for you? Well, for me, it was two pieces. And uh, again, and I think conversations with you, you really helped me identify that. Because there were the people that I were, that I were coaching that already had a Ted talk. So it was like, great, create this product, you know, to help people give better TED Talks. But then there was more people, actually, a, a much bigger market of people that wanted to give a TED Talk. And so for, for some people, it's not... When not you, you and I talked about it, we really talked about combining a very powerful TED Talk. So it ended up, I ended up combining those things together. And it ended up being the best thing that I ever did. Wow, the best thing you ever did. I'm glad we're <laughs> recording this. Hey, the best thing that I ever did. Yes, for sure. For sure. I, like, no joke either. Seriously. And, and sometimes it's a problem that people solve. So we all have to look at our own market. Okay, what's the problem or what's the aspiration? And I think your situation is more of an aspiration where people want to give TED Talks. And then the problem is, well, how do I do it? How do I get booked? How, how, how? So there's so many questions. And uh, when I looked at your experience, and sometimes we're so close that we don't even see the value of our own experience. And when I looked at yours, you, you had the triple threat. You were a coach, uh, you were an organizer, and you gave one. So your three different perspectives made you say this, like, hello, yeah. this is what you have to do. And yeah, I think I never a lot of people are, what was that? I never forgot that either. You actually were the one to point it out to me that I had the three different perspectives. I was like, you're right, I do. And there aren't many people out there that had those three different perspectives. So um, I think you're right. Sometimes it's, I think what you do with people, Darren, is help them see themselves in a different light. Cause you do, you get really close to things and you don't realize, you don't realize how much of an expert you might actually be. So yeah, we, we take for granted what we know. And we think that everyone has been through the same classes, had the same experience. So it's like, well, everybody knows this or a lot of people know this. Well, no, think of somebody brand new, somebody just having that dream or wanting to overcome or maybe their boss threw something at them that now they have to learn something completely new. They're just getting started. So they need that hope. So uh, let's switch gears a little bit. So 
what was the first product that you created? So what was your first, you had the book, what was your multiple stream, which was a different topic? Yeah, yeah. So I ended up, uh, what I ended up doing, by the way, on that note of, of no, not knowing, I just want to go back to that for a second. I call it the corruption of knowledge. Sometimes you have the knowledge and you're corrupted by it because you actually think that everybody knows what you know. Um, I created the I created the product How to Rock a TED Talk and with conversations with you, it was really brilliant. We talked about how to create it and you had me create an audio product and you were, you were telling me that it, it's the most consumable product that you can make and oh my gosh were you right so I'm here I am selling my book for 20 20 dollars that you know I had to slave over to write and I created the how to rock a TED talk program I ended up putting it on audio and put it in a little flash drive but of course because I'm a marketer I, I had to wrap it in this cute you had little... to make better packaging than me <laughs> exactly that was my goal make it better than Darren's exactly that's what I cool. wanted. that's a good goal but it is so... it's great Let's back up for a half a step. So forget the time where you were procrastinating, which a lot of people procrastinate. The time to create the MP3 versus the time to create the book. Oh, that, okay. The book took longer. The book definitely took longer. I mean, I had to go through the whole, you know, editing process and the book took over a year. Um, the How to Rock a TED Talk program could have taken I would safely say a couple months to do it right. I mean, to get all the, I mean, you know, I created a bunch of marketing material. It, it wasn't just the audio. There's a whole bunch of tools in there. So I did it right. I mean, by the time I put the package together, I had done it well. And people that go through it still say that. They're like, wow, it's so much more than just audio. You know, there's a lot of tools. And um, so, I, you know, I would say you could get it done in a couple months. But definitely, it was like four times faster than than. Yeah, and, the book was. and I'm a proponent so that you really need both. You need a book for credibility. You need the audio for profit. Um, but what's really been cool is hearing your story is having this program, it's actually opened you up to help uh, almost create other streams of income that you've been now asked to consult. You've been brought in by a Fortune uh, 100 company uh, at, for big, I don't know if we can say the dollar figure, but uh, there was three digits before the comma. <laughs> That's true. It's very true. <laughs> yes, it's true. Yeah. You know, Darren, it's like, when, so when the product first came out, I was like, oh, great. You know, and I got a lot of interest from people that wanted to give TED Talks. What I didn't see myself, and I'm sure you probably saw it. I didn't really see it. I really didn't see that big, you know, large corporations would want to say, hey, we want to use this as standard training. We don't want to give TED Talks, but we love TED Talks and we would love our people to get trained. And so, yeah, I had a year long contract with a big fortune 100 company <laughs> that wanted to train their entire North American brand. So it was several offices across North America. Every single person in North America, uh, North American brand went through it and went, they all got, they all ended up getting the materials. And it was actually that client that uh, talking about, you know, iterating new things. They originally asked me like, Hey, can you print the interactive guide, because I had it, you know, I had it on the stick as a global PDF, and they wanted me to interactive PDF, and they wanted yeah. a printed copy. They wanted a printed copy because you know it's so much easier to actually kind of go through my program and then actually you know write things down and take notes. So we started printing them, you know, just at Kinkos and had the spiral bound, but then decided, hey, we should probably do this pro, and I decided to get this, you know, bound. So I actually got like a real legit like workbook and um although you know you just yelled at me for not having it on my site i don't have it on my site yet but all of my big clients i know it's terrible all my big clients get it kid <laughs> my babies just ugh. i know you you know what i'm baby steps with me you know you have to like you have to annoy me in this stuff so um no it's been really good they love that and they see that as a huge added bonus and even though it, it doesn't cost me that much i can charge like so much for it because it's a huge value um, and, and it becomes an, and for your contract, it becomes an add on for supplies for the people. So there's a dollar per head as well in your contract, correct? Yeah. So more than half the contract was actually, was actually not just the speaking and the consulting. It was the materials. And for everyone watching, I did not receive any percentage. Uh, I don't, I don't think that's true. I, I think I might've kicked you back something. <laughs> Because that's how we take care of each other in this in this industry. But yes, I don't I don't think you deserved your your due your due you know your due commission. 
Yeah. So, uh, so what it's, what's cool about this is if we're speakers and we're truly experts, we need to look at different tools to help people. And what I love about your story is we started with the audio. Uh, it was meant as a consumer based product that turned into a corporate based product. It turned into then the workbook and then the workbook, you know, became even more professional. Uh, and now there's another stream of income. So if you and I always look, uh, if you're watching this, if you always look at what are the tools that people need, how can I help them? It becomes a no brainer and it becomes value based as opposed to, I want to sell another product. You know, it's not about that at all. It's different tools that help people in different ways. But what Kathy learned is the clients start asking you, no, even worse than that, Darren, it goes even further. So I, I don't even know if you know the story. I just thought about it when you were talking. So there was somebody that a uh, client of yours was on your website and on your stage time university. He's a member of your university. He, he saw my, my one hour program, how to rock a Ted talk. And he was like, Oh, I want to watch that. I would really love to give a Ted talk. So he watched the hour version, ended up buying, ended up going to my site, buying the full program with your discount code. <laughs> and he, uh, he, I didn't know him. I don't know him. I didn't know him prior to this. He ended up going through the whole program, like super quick, went through it a couple of times. He got a Ted talk. He killed his Ted talk, he killed it. I mean, he, they put it up online and he had like 50,000 views, like out, right out of the gate. It's really mm. great. Um, he then came back to me and said, well, they're asking me to coach. So I, it ended up turning and it kind of turned a light bulb on for me. I was like, Oh, I, I could certify people that go through my program and then get a Ted talk and I could certify them to coach. So if they want to do one-on-one -on -one coaching, I personally like the, the corporate coaching, but so now I've certified my second coach and so now I have other people coaching another on my other stream of income, another stream, totally, totally separate stream. So. So you just, you, you know, I think the lesson here too, Darren, is like, listen to people, listen to other people that can see a little bit further down the road that, than you can. And um, just how, always have your eyes open to know where you can go next. Like if you would have even asked me when you and I were talking about it and you had convinced me, I would probably not have said, oh, it's going to turn into this, 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 and that. I wouldn't have, I just wouldn't have known. And it just took me down this route that was unbelievable. Hmm. And where do you think you'd be now if you didn't have that? What would be different in your business? Oh my gosh. I, would I even have a business? I don't even know. <laughs> I think you would. I mean, I mean, I'm serious. It's like, I mean, of course, you know, you would put your effort somewhere else and I'd probably be doing a lot more speaking, but I would probably be trying to get a lot of speaking gigs and you know, that's, that's, uh, that's tiring. But I, and you know, my book came out in 2012. It's already like five years old. And even though I still speak on it regularly, I really think that, I don't know. I honestly, I have no idea. I think it came at the right time in my career and it really boosted my business up. I, it, I mean, at the right time. So I just, I don't know. It was definitely a necessity. And um, what was I going to ask in terms of the, uh, the leverage in your business that it gave you, because I see it gave you all these facets. You in fact have also now have a whole staff and a, a few coaches that help you with this fortune 500. So you probably wouldn't have six people working for you now, as opposed to before it was just, uh, just a couple of you in your office. I even have an office. <laughs> your office has grown and your staff has grown. That's what I was trying to go. Go yeah, yeah, I have a I have a kick butt office in Southwest Portland near the waterfront. Beautiful location. It we painted the whole office my colors, red, white, and black. I mean, it's just it is to, my business is totally different now. It's it's amazing, and it just uh, it it really um, is me thinking about how to be. You know, I can't. I, I have to credit a little bit of this to my my brother in law who told me when I first started my business. He said. Hmm. You're going to be a speaker and an author. He's like, how are you going to be anything other than self-employed? And that really like stuck in my brain. Mm. Um, so I think at the time when you told me I needed to create a product, it really brought me back to what he had said and go, yeah, how do I create something that's just not me dependent on me? So mm. it was just beautiful timing, I think. Well, sometimes we get advice from different areas and it all comes together and makes sense. So here's my biggest question for people who are watching, who are either, let's, let's start with an emerging speaker, somebody just getting started. When do you think they start and get product? Uh, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> 
yesterday. Seriously, like I don't, I see a lot of people in NSA. I, we have a new, um, in NSA Oregon, we have a, a bunch of new um, speakers coming in, going through the, the academy program. And I think that uh, a lot of people just assume that they're going to pick a topic and become a speaker. And, and I, I really, I, and, and I think some people just automatically think that there's only two routes. I like, got to get a book. You got to do this. But I think Darren, what you're brilliant at, at is saying there's so many other ways that you can get, you know, income. There's so many other streams and, and you're right. A book is very, it makes you, it's very, you know, to the world, it's credibility, but uh, you've done a really good job of opening my eyes and so many other people to all the other streams that are out there. And I think that people need to be thinking about that from the gate, you know, right out of the gate from the get go. Cool. And for people who are experienced, uh, they're experienced speaker, they got a high fee, they're getting paid. What would you tell them about your experience? Uh, what advice would you give them? That's another good question because it goes back to what my brother-in-law said. I see a lot of speakers who've worked their way up and they get a high dollar amount and they're always on a plane and they're making lots of money. What happens the day that you can't get on a plane anymore? What happens if you get sick? What happens, you know, and we what don't happens disability if, insurance? Right, exactly. Or what happens if you have, uh, I have a couple of friends that, you know, they had some problems with their marriages of like they're traveling too much and it became a big issue. So what happens when you need to duplicate yourself? You know, that's, you need to have a really good product that will live beyond you. You know, I have, I have conversations with my IP lawyer all the time now about my book and about my products and how they can keep selling even when I'm dead and I have to have a plan for, you know, what those products will do. It's amazing. I'm like, I can't believe I'm having this conversation. It's, yeah, there's a happy thought, yeah, it's a, but it's, it's an important thought. thought, especially if people have families and they need to take care of them for sure. It's like, it doesn't, it ends if it's only, if you're only a speaker or you're only maybe a one product wonder, uh, it ends when you end. Yeah, you exactly. You have to, I it mean, look at Dale Carnegie, Dale Carnegie's name's still out there. They still have a whole staff and team working. Uh, if we really want to take care of the people in our lives, we need to start doing other things and, and branch out and create other tools that can live on after you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Kathy, I don't want to take too much of your time. I really appreciate your time and especially opening up your experience. Uh, any other tips of, about the process, you know, maybe listening to yourself and hating it? <laughs> yeah, I did. I definitely hated it. I, well, here's, here's one thing. I, I'm going to, I'm going to drop a, another piece of wisdom from my brother-in-law. He, he's always, you know, he's an MIT uh, MBA graduate. He, he's, he, he definitely thinks more process than I do, but he told me this one time and I, I would love for new speakers, experienced speakers to consider this. Um, anytime you think about being successful in your area of business, no matter what that is, if you're an entrepreneur and you run a restaurant or you're a speaker or a trainer, you always have to think about the point of entry. And the harder that the point of entry is to get into, the, the, the more money you can make, the easier the point of entry. Like for instance, if you can get a real estate license in three months and you can start selling real estate, that's great. But that means millions of other people can do the same. And I believe in our, I believe in our industry, there's two points of entry. There's just the point where you can go out and you can talk for a very low fee, you don't have to have a book and people will hire you. And then I believe at the level that you're trying to get people to there, it's a really extremely tough point of entry. It's, it's a point where you're really showing yourself as an expert and you're proving it with not just a one hit wonder, but you're doing it with multiple pieces of, of you know, product and you're really showing the world that you can do it over and over again. Once you break into that, that's awesome. So that's, I think what you're, I think that's what everybody's looking for. And when people get frustrated and with the process, cause sometimes there's mistakes and roadblocks, what would you tell them? Um, keep pushing through, you know, I, the, the extra mile is the loneliest mile. Of course. I mean, you're out there and you know, if you're willing to do what other people aren't willing to do, you're going to get what other people won't get. I mean, it's just how it is. And it, it is frustrating. I, at the time, you know, when I was recording, I had braces on the back of my teeth and, Recording every day required me to get up every morning and do a whole slew of mouth exercises just so I could talk a couple hours. It was frustrating. The editing process was worse. I mean, it was terrible. So, but it's done now. And, and, and now I can just look at it and go, Woo! <laughs> and now you can duplicate it. You can focus on getting it out there, getting in front of the people who need it and you're helping people. I mean, how, I know you're talking earlier about Lefford. How cool is it that Lefford, uh, 
as a TED talk. I mean, he shared it with me. He was so excited and, and you were the one who taught him. Uh, yeah. But I know he learned about it from stage time. But anyway, it's like there's nothing like the feeling of helping somebody who takes what you have. And there's only a small percentage that are actually going to do everything. But we got to be responsible to everyone. And then those people who really are, have it in them to make it happen big time. It, there's no better feeling as a mentor, as a teacher. And uh, I thank you for your time and for helping other people through your process. And uh, if you uh, are interested in the brand new program, just check out multiple streams of speaking uh, The live launch is happening right now. And the price is like less than half price. And you can learn Do a lot it. of what I taught Kathy. Do it. Do it. You, you, it's so worth it. Do it, please. All right. Well, thanks, Kathy. Thank Good luck yeah. and uh, keep growing. Yeah. Thanks so much.